What's up, buddy? Hey, Monarch. Well, our guinea fowl and our three little bantam roosters spent their first night outside last night. Two nights ago, they slept up on this first branch. It was really low, so I was able to get them and put them back in their little chicken coop. But last night, they learned from that, and they went up really high in the tree. So I let them go. So if they keep doing that, they're officially outside full time. All right, well, we've got a lot of things going on here today. I've got my first annual inspection for these guys tomorrow, our red golden pheasants. That means I've got to have clean water, I've got to get their food in order, and I've got to get their living situation all taken care of along with documentation on where I got them from and how many I have. And yes, it is a pretty good day to work on our aviary chicken coop. I'll probably go check in with that, and then we'll see what all the animals are up to. So let's get started. When you're busy growing up, know that I'm right here. Now these chickens can get out every morning. They've got water out here and they actually do have food. For the last two weeks, they've had this automatic feeder that they can step on and get access to feed. But only a few of them know how to use it, I think. So a lot of them end up waiting for me to bring out feed for them. But I just got a new feeder in the mail. So I wanna open that up and see how it compares to the one we're already using. tell this is a muddy mess. We just moved this coop from this area over here less than a week ago and we've had two days of rain and this place is already muddy. But everything is messed up and it feels like no one cares. When you're busy growing up Cashew and Peekaboo doing well. Hey, Bamboo. What's going on, bud? How you doing, buddy? Ten minutes with these guys and I'm exhausted. Cashew is on a roll this morning. Will not stop. <laughs> Cashew, come here, girl. Come on. Come on. All right, workout time. As you can see, it is a muddy mess. All up and down this walkway right in front of the gate. No amount of straw will will help with that. My only hope is that the sun comes out and we'll dry it up. Bamboo, you're calm and cool, man. Everyone else is crazy. Hey, buddy. You're not crazy like those other girls. All right, well, I gotta get on to other things, huh? You guys have a great day. I'll see you later. Miss Lurkey has been laying some eggs in here and we're gonna have a problem. We were gonna leave them in here to let her sit on them. Four, five, six, seven. This one was just laid today. And while I didn't want to disturb these eggs, I wanted her to lay a batch of them and hatch them out. It's not gonna work this week because end of this week, we're gonna have two nights in the 20s and those eggs will freeze and not be viable. So while we could take these and eat these, which we will do with some of them, somebody suggested we could actually open these up and see if they're fertile, and I'll show you how we do that. And I think that's a great suggestion because I don't know if Slater and Lurkey are actually breeding, so this way I can find out if these eggs are getting fertilized at all. Okay, that's egg number one, and I'm, what I'm looking for is a little spot, which will be the spot where it gets fertilized. I do not see it on here. So let's try it again with egg number two. So we cracked open three eggs and there is no 
fertilization spot on there. We got four left over here. I'll take those in so we can eat those. But we've got no fertilized spot. So even if she had sat on these, they would not have had. That's disappointing. I'm gonna leave these out and these chickens and guineas can eat this for breakfast. Well, I know the world is a little crazy right now and we've had some people ask us how we're doing through it all and hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy through all of this, uh, this virus stuff. How has it affected us? Not a great deal because we actually stay here on our property the majority of the time we have to go out for, for food. We've got to go out for animal feed occasionally. So the main thing that we're working on right now is to produce more of our own food on our property. With animal feed, we can't really do that right now. But with our own food, with our garden that we haven't started yet, that's how we can produce more food for ourselves. And so that's something that we're excited to start on, but it's also gonna take a few months to get things going, to get things growing. So that's where we're at, is that we are safe where we're at. There's not a lot of cases in our area. Of course, that can change by the day, but we're thinking about you guys and we hope you guys are staying safe. And I hope it encourages everyone to start to think about their future. How can they be more self-reliant grow their own food, take care of their family and a space. You know, you don't all need a ton of land like we've got here, but just to create an environment where you can start to create some of your own food. So in a crisis where things start to get shut down and, and you're not able to get out, that you could still survive if you had to. So this guinea got his foot stuck right over here in the fence. It's almost out. So it's barely hooked in there. So this guy was stuck in the fence and then everybody was beating him up when he tried to go back through. You doing all right? This one's been inside the turkey yard all day. I don't know if it's hiding out from the others or what's going on. Let's check it out. For some reason they're chasing and fighting here. Now I'm starting to understand why it was in the turkey yard. wants privacy from these guys. What are you doing? What are you doing to this one? Why are you guys hurting that one? Can't figure this one out. It's just trying to hide and play dead or something. Well, I don't know what's going on with this one, why the other ones are after it. It's a female or if it's a male thing, I don't know. But we have their little coop. We can always take some back too, and so I'll let this one be in there and it can have food and water and be just fine by itself. All right, well, I have three cages to clean up. The mandarin ducks, the red golden pheasants, and the peafowl. And you ask, why would you have to clean all three and get them ready for the inspection when they're only here to inspect the red golden pheasants? Well, usually when they come around, they poke their head around everything else just to make sure that every animal is taken care of, everyone's doing fine, even though it's not required by the, the code or my permit that specifically is for the pheasants. They're gonna check everything else and just make sure that I'm not doing something else that I shouldn't be doing. So I just wanna give them confidence that I'm taking care of all the animals. And so we're going to get some straw, clean out their waters, clean out their feeders, and all food. Calm down! What's up, Blue? How you doing, buddy? All right, next up are the mandarin ducks. I'm going to get some straw in here. I've already got their food, and then we'll get their waters refilled. All right, mandarin ducks are all set. This camera soaked. What did these guys do to it? Holy smokes. Okay, they got this way wetter than normal. All right, lastly, I need to work on the pheasant area. And if you're wondering if you have a bird that you either have or you want to get, and you're wondering, is this something that I need to get a permit for? Am I going to get in trouble for having whatever this bird is? Be sure to check your state conservation department. We need to get a permit if we have wild turkeys, if we have 
mallard ducks, grouse, pheasants, partridges, and if we have quail. So basically the things that we need to have ready for tomorrow's inspection. I need to have water cleaned out. We're gonna hang a new water in here. We need to have the feeder cleaned out and that area cleaned. We're gonna put straw down so that'll cover up all the feed that they knock onto the ground. We're gonna put in a different feeder because this is really light. I think they're flying through here and knocking it out. And then you need to have a good living situation, which we do. You need to be able to provide shade for them. They need to be banded, which I have little bands, which identifies each one of them. We have uh, their own number. So if they were to escape, uh, people from the State Conservation Department would be able to uh, link them back to us if they were to get out into the wild. And why do we have them if it's such a, a challenging thing to actually go through? It's not that challenging. They inspect once a year. The fee for them is pretty low. I think it's 10 or 20 bucks a year that you pay for a, a permit. We love to have them because of the, the, the beauty that they provide and also the challenge of having a different type of bird that we don't have. So um, specifically Blaze, he's gonna look amazing this summer. Uh, if you remember fire last year, he was starting to look really cool before he passed away. And these guys will all move over to the aviary whenever we complete that in the next four to six weeks. And I'll be sure to show them uh, my plans for that, the Missouri Conservation Department, so that they can approve what I'm doing over there so they'll understand that that's where they're gonna ultimately be set at. So we're all set for the inspector tomorrow. I'll let you guys know how it goes. That's why you our bikes in the barn. It's been raining for a couple days and it's getting really muddy out and the weather is pretty decent. It's about 50s so we thought we'd be hanging out here in the barn and then maybe later we're going to go tackle one of our barns cleaning that out. We've got some animals that we're going to be bringing on the farm and we need a home for them so we're going to be cleaning out some barns for them and making a space for them. We've got a couple packages to open. We opened a couple things from Premier One a couple weeks ago and they saw the video, I guess, and they wanted us to have a few other things. So we're gonna check out what they sent over our way. You wanna open them up, Eli? Yes. Okay. Well, we unboxed a, a feeder that we bought a couple weeks ago and I showed you this morning the chickens we've been using it. They just brought another product line of feeder where it's actually rather than a plate, it's a, a step where a chicken would step on. All right. Over here, we've got the 66 pound automatic chicken feeder. The chickens will come up and they'll step on one of these two and that will open it up. Our other one didn't have this feature is that it's got a viewing window right here and so we can see when the feed gets past halfway down. And see that this one has holes on the back here so we could actually hang it on the side of the chicken coop if we wanted to. I'll play with this tomorrow and figure out where to put this in the chicken yard. All right, well, Premier sent us three heat lamps, and I've got one right here with a, a bulb already in it, and you just put this cover right there, and now we've got a heat lamp that's fully protected by this outer covering. And Premier One, thank you so much for sending this stuff our way. We really appreciate it, and we'll link this couple items down in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Thanks, Premier One. We got one of the lights set up over Pickles' cage right here. We're about to get them outside as soon as it warms up a little bit more. You got Pickles right there? Yeah. Yes. Nintendo. Pickles is our lion head rabbit, is that right? Is that your yeah. rabbit? Yeah. We need to find him a, a girl sometime so he can have a buddy that he can have some little lion head babies with. The guineas have been sleeping up in this tree the last few nights. And the cat came up here. Oh, don't leave them. Some nights they sleep there, but I like it better when they sleep up there. A little bit out of the reach of any predator that might pop up here. And there's our banished guinea right up there. All by him or herself. I don't know what's going on there, but at least it's found peace by itself. All right, we passed. Overall, it was a good experience. We showed them um, everything we've been doing over here at our new property because our first inspection was at our old property. So, you gonna go get one? You gonna go get a pheasant? You wanna get a pheasant with me? This is the mother of all the pheasants we have is Ember right here. 
What do you think, buddy? Well, they were happy with everything we're doing here, from the water to the food to the, the housing. And we showed them the new place, the area where we'll put in the aviary. And they seem to be pretty happy with what our plans were for that. So uh, we're really excited about that and relieved that everything went well today. Well, if you guys have any questions for me is regarding our inspection or if you need to do something specific to your state, be sure to check out your state conservation department's website. They'll probably be able to answer a lot of questions on there, but you can also leave stuff down in the comment section here. I'll try to answer it the best I can or point you in the right direction. Well, thank you for following along for our journey. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed to our channel. We'll see you guys next time.